I think I just never got off the kick when I was a kid. I'd read dinosaur books and my parents, when we went on vacations, they would take me to different digs and fossil sites and things like that and I just never grew out of it. I would get emotional because that, that's just what I wanted to do and there was no sort of talking me out of it. That was it. I have wanted to be a paleontologist for my entire life. So finally getting the chance to do it and publishing in it and excavating something and preparing it, it was, I don't know how to describe it because it's just something I've always wanted to do, a plesiosaur. So it's essentially, kind of think of like the Loch Ness Monster. The variety that I worked on has a short neck and a bigger head, really sharp teeth, ate fish, um, lived at the same time the dinosaurs did, but was swimming in water instead. So it's still a reptile, but it was swimming in water instead of walking on land. There's so few people studying plesiosaurs in the world that we all know each other. Most of the work so far has been done on the eastern part of this seaway. There was a giant seaway that ran through the central part of North America at the time the dinosaurs were around. And since most people have been doing work on the eastern side, we don't really know what's on the western side. And so it's very exciting to find new stuff on the western side that nobody's ever seen before, no one's ever described before. Um, and it also actually pushes the, the range of this particular animal back by about seven million years. So it's seven million years older than anything that it's really closely related to, which is pretty remarkable. So it's not just that it's a new thing, it's actually pushing the range of this particular type of animal back quite, quite a big range of time. But my big goal here is definitely to involve students in this work. I'm planning on taking a student out to the same area in southern Utah with me this summer to prospect, look for fossils. If we find something, they'll be on an excavation with me. And hopefully that'll carry forward for basically every summer from here on out. I'm hoping to take a student, at least one student, out with me to do this kind of work. And when I get the new prep lab in the building, they'll be preparing fossils with me and doing, doing research. So that's something I'm really excited about working on here. It's kind of interesting because before I had submitted my paper, it's, it's very difficult to name a new species. It's not like you just say it's a new species and it gets declared as such. It has to go through this very lengthy peer review process in order for you to actually get that designation. Um, so the people that had reviewed my paper initially weren't so keen on the idea and had looked at my specimen and weren't really totally in agreement with me that it was something new which made me very nervous about submitting the paper because I didn't know if people were going to agree with me. But thankfully, I, I made a really strong case and found an additional specimen that fit within it. Um, and so when they actually initially reviewed my paper, they fully agreed with me and the reviews were spectacular. They were some of the nicest reviews I've ever gotten. 